Number 48. Find the total Coulomb force on the charge Q in the figure 18.53, given that Q is 1 microcoulomb, QA is 2 micro, B is negative 3, C is negative 4, and D is 1. This, and the square is 50 centimeters on a side. All right, so basically, uh, this problem is similar to the one we've just looked at in number 47, except here we're dealing with forces. But forces are vectors, electric fields are vectors, so we basically have the same ideas going on. All right. So we have to find the uh, force on this charge. What that means is we got to find the vectors acting on charge Q. So let's just plug in the signs first just to get an idea of what directions the vector should be pointing, all right? So Q, they told us, was going to be a positive value. So let's draw them as positive. The A was also positive, so let's put A as positive. B is negative, so that's going to be a negative sign. C is also negative, and then D was positive. Okay, so let's draw in each of the vectors now. All right, let's start with A. So you're finding the force. Now remember, the force, according to the formula on the right-hand side, kq1, q2 over r squared, the force is a function of both the charge of one of the items, one of the charges, and the charge of the other. All right, so what that means is, in order to find the force acting on q, you got to know not only the force, excuse me, not only the charge of q, but the charge of the item that you're uh, talking about calculating the force. Uh, between, right? So here we know that these, and now what we basically are doing here, just so we're clear, is that I'm, I'm looking at each of these separately, right? We've seen this in the past, all right? So I'm looking at each charge individually, I'm going to find each vector individually, and then I know once I have all my vectors, I just got to find the resultant, okay? It's that straightforward. So this is an, a, a repulsive force, right? So therefore, the force on Q produced by QA will be repulsive and pointing in that direction, Okay, right? If you think about it, you put two positive charges there. Where is this going to be moving? Well, it's going to be moving away, right? This one's also moving in that opposite direction. They're repulsive. So this we'll call uh, FA. How about now between B and Q? Well, that's attractive now, right? So that's going to be pointing towards that. And this is going to be F sub B. How about positive Q and the negative Q sub C. Well, that's attractive, so that's going to be pointing that way. And this is now the force of on C. And now how about this? We have Q sub D, and that's positive, and now here's Q, right? So we're going to then have that repulsive force pointing in that direction. So this is F sub D. Great. Now you might say, oh, look at the picture. Great. They're all going to cancel. They're all pointing in opposite directions, so the answer is zero. Well, the answer will only be zero if two things are the case. If this thing is at the center of the uh, square. And by the way, does it even tell us that? No, it doesn't. So guess what we have to do? We have to assume. And you know what happens when we assume sometimes? But it won't be the case in this problem, so don't worry about it. So basically, uh, we're, we're going to assume that this is in the middle. And uh, if this were in the middle, and all of these charge values... Okay, with the same magnitude, then it would be zero. They would all sum to zero because all these forces would then be the same. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So QA is going to be two micro coulombs. So I'm just going to write I'm just going to write two here. And just know it's all micro. I'm going to take the times ten to the minus six into account when I do my calculations. The QB is going to be negative three. The QC is the negative four. And then the uh, D is going to be 1. And the charge on Q itself is also 1. So as you can see, they're not all going to be equal. So what I basically now, uh, what I basically now need to do is I have to find the force values, right, for each. So we can do that in terms of our calculations. We can also create a nice component table, right, a component table that we looked at last time. So yeah, why don't we do that? It's a little longer, but I think it makes it a little clearer. So Y component, and when I say last time, I mean on the prior problem, vector. So let's call this F sub A. So we're dealing with this one, okay? Now, uh, what do we need to do in order to actually find, you know, F sub A, let's just say? Well, we know the force between the charge A and Q is going to be equal to K times QA times Q all over the distance between them squared. So finding the force value, it's going to be 8.99 times 10 to the 9th times Q sub A, which is 2 times 10 to the minus 6 times Q, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 6, all divided now by the distance between them squared. 
What's the distance between them? Well, they didn't tell us, but they told us this thing is a square, right? That's 50 centimeters on the side. So let me just do this, right? We know the square is 50 centimeters or 0.5 meters on a side. And that means that the distance between this charge and this charge is going to be represented by a nice little triangle that looks just like this. Boom, right? Let me ask you a question. What is this side of the triangle? Well, if you know the whole length here is going to be 0.5, then you know, the, and, the, and this is right in the middle, right? We know that it's going to be half, so 0.25, right? 0.25. And then how about this x component, basically, 0.25? So therefore we can find that, right? How do we do that? We use Pythagorean's theorem. So do that on out, all right? I'm gonna do the shortcut down here, all right? Um, if you wanna, you know, I, I talked about the shortcut number 48, uh, excuse me, 47, all right? So take a look over that problem. It'd be good to also do that problem too. It's a very challenging one, but if you can do these problems, the test will be cake. So this is going to be 0 0.25 squared plus 0 0.25 squared. I know some of you might be saying, well, what about the square root? How did you do that? Again, check out number 47 or, and just calculate it. All right. This is not going to be the resultant vector, though. This is going or the hypotenuse there. This is going to be the square of that hypotenuse. Check it out for yourself. All right. So here we go. 8.99 times 10 to the ninth multiplied by 2 times 10 to the minus 6th multiplied by 1 times 10 to the minus 6th all divided by them parentheses 0.25 squared plus 0.25 squared. And we get a value of approximately here, uh, 0 0.1438, whatever, 1438. Now, that's the magnitude of F sub A, right? That is the magnitude. However, however, we have to know the X and the Y components, right? So what do we now have to do to this? Well, we got to find the X and Y components. Now, how do we do that? Well, you can draw a coordinate system here, right? I know, I'm with you, by the way. Whenever I do that, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking the same thing as you. I'm like, oh God, how do we do, what do we got to do now? So uh, we got to find the X or Y component for this vector, right? So we got to know these d angles. What are the angles? 45, right? It's, a, it's, it, it's all based off of a square. So hopefully that makes sense, right? So um, I'm going to just shortcut that just so this video doesn't come out to be a half an hour long again. I probably will somehow, but... Uh, what I'm going to do here is multiply this by sine of 45. Now, you could have done cosine. It doesn't really matter. But this will give us the X and the Y component. So multiply that by sine of 45. And here we have then the X component of this particular vector. Now, it is important, though, to, to draw your, your axes at this point. And the reason why is because we have to plug in the signs. So this vector has a positive X component and a negative Y component. All right. So I can plug in the magnitudes, but when I plug in the signs, I got to be very careful. So the X component here is positive, so 0 0.1017, and the Y component is negative 0 0.1017. All right. Very good. Only three left, guys. Only three left. So F sub B. Now I'm going to do this a lot faster. Notice the um, distance between... F, uh, Q sub B and the charge is going to be the same as we calculated over here. All right. And then when we square it, it's going to be the same result. So that I'm not going to do again. The only thing that's changing is what? If you look at this formula, instead of Q sub A, now it's just going to be Q sub B. Right. Q is staying the same. So I'm just going to start. I'm just going to do the calculations right away in the calculator. All right. So there's going to be 8.99 times 10 to the ninth multiplied by Q sub B, which is 3 times 10 to the minus. Remember, it doesn't. it's all absolute values, so you don't have to worry about the sign. 3 times 10 to the minus 6 times 1 times 10 to the minus 6, all divided by parentheses 0.25 squared plus 0.25 squared. And what do we get? Then you have to take the sine or cosine of 45 of that because it's all at right angles. And here we get 0.1525-ish or so. So F sub B now has a positive X and a positive Y, so plug that in. So 0 0.1521526 and 0 0.1526. Those are the X and Y components. Great. Running through this now. And I'm probably, yeah, what I'll do. Let's just move this on over here for now. All right. <clears throat> so F sub C now. And again, same process. 
All right, F sub C, I got to know the charge here, it's four, all right? So 8.99 times 10 to the ninth multiplied by four times 10 to the minus six times one times 10 to the minus six, all divided by then 0.25 squared plus 0.25 squared. Multiply that then by the sine of 45, and what do we get? So here we're going to have now a negative x because this vector is in the negative x direction and the negative y, right? Alrighty, so it's going to be now negative 0 0.24 0.20, sorry, 34, and then negative 0 0.2034. And now finally, let's do F sub D. So that's this vector on over here. And now what we need to do is we know that the charge on D is going to be one microcoulomb. So we just substitute that on out uh, and plug it in, you know, plug in the one microcoulomb instead of the two in our formula that we were using before. So K is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth multiplied by one times 10 to the minus six times one times 10 to the minus six, all divided by then 0.25 squared plus 0.25 squared. You get that value and then multiply that by the sine of 45. All right, so here the F sub D has a negative X component to it and a positive Y. So there's gonna be negative point, uh, zero five, zero nine or so. And this one will be positive, all right, zero point, yeah, point zero five, sorry. 0 0.0509. All right, last, now, that's it. All we gotta do now is sum this all together to find that resultant force. Okay, sum these all together now. So let's plug them in. All right, I'm gonna go back and find the exact values in the calculator. And we're just gonna add them all together, all right? So here we got uh, that value that looks pretty uh, good there. All right, so we got that plus then the 0.5626. I'm doing the X's by the way right now. One second, 0.15, yep, two six. And then now subtract out, I know this process is a little long here. So subtract out uh, that value of 0.2 and then subtract out now that value we just found. And here we go. So we get a value of zero. Cool, great. And like I said, you know, that it's a little tough to see in here, but if I did the formula, if I did it, you know, algebraically this problem, we could have simplified the problem such and you would have noticed the X components would have canceled. Um, that would have been the faster way to do it. However, I, I feel like a lot of students like the component method. It breaks everything on up. We, we see each piece clearly, All right? So it's totally, totally up to you. Um, and now let's do the, the uh, Y components here. All right, so let me take my prior answer because the magnitudes are the same, it's just going to be the signs that have changed, just input the negative sign on the first one, plus the second, which is good, then it's going to be minus the third, and then plus the fourth now. And what do we get? We get now a negative, negative 0 0.1017, 1017, great, okay. So now we have our the components of our resultant force. So if you had to plot this resultant force, like if this axis that I'm drawing here is the same as the green axis I made over here, the resultant force has components of no x component and it's all negative y component, right? So it's just pointing straight down. This is the resultant force here. So that is going to be equal to 0 0.1017, All right, And actually, let me just say 0 0.102, right, for rounding now. That is the resultant vector, all right? So we can say now that the resultant force then is going to be 0 0.102, oops, 102 newtons, you know, due south, if you like. Right, that's fine. You gotta give the direction two, all right? Um, yeah, so that that's that. Uh, let me just try to, th I'm just trying to think of, yeah, that's perfect. Anything else? Nope. Okay. So that takes care of that. It's a very simple, we didn't have to do, you know, the Pythagorean theorem here because it had no X component. So it was all Y. All right. But hopefully that makes sense. So that would be then the force, meaning the force on this charge is directed literally directly downward. And that's going to be the direction of it. Okay. If it were to accelerate, which it should, because it has a net force. F is equal to MI. Okay, I'm out. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. Uh, we appreciate it, and we look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.